When it comes to student motivators, often as a teacher, you have to make a decision of which motivator you will choose to increase the behavior you want to see. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing six type of student motivators that you can use to increase the behavior you want to see in your classroom today. Coming up next. Hey everybody, Michelle Holiday here. I'm a behavior strategist and I help teachers, schools, districts, and student-based organizations with system strategies and insight to help them manage their students and their learning environments with less stress and less struggle. And in today's video, we're talking about six types of motivators that will help you increase the behaviors you wanna see in your classroom. As a teacher, you're always making decisions about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And it is no different when it comes to choosing motivators for your classroom. So today I just wanna to talk about six types of motivators paired in sets of two to help you make some quality, effective decisions with your classroom management. Set number one, verbal versus nonverbal motivators. So when we talk about verbal motivators, of course we're talking about saying something positive or encouraging to your student about their behavior. And this of course is the easiest one by far. It's free, it's quick, and, it, it, and a lot of times it gives a quick impact with student behavior. One of my favorite ones to do is a student shout out. And basically where I call out a student's name, I give a one phrase or one sentence description on their behavior and why it was so great. For example, I just wanna give a shout out to Sheila. I love how she stayed on task for the entire small group session. Way to go, Sheila. Woo, woo. Notice with the student shout out, I mean, it was quick, it was verbal. I was really clear on the behavior that I appreciated and wanted to see in the classroom. You can do the same thing and it doesn't have to be a shout out. Make a decision based on your personality of how you want to do the shout outs. The wonderful thing about verbal motivators is that because it's free, cheap, and you can do it at any time, you can do it at the end of the day, during a transition, or at the end of the period. On the other side, we have nonverbal reinforcers, which can look like physical signals that you do in your classroom. One of my favorites is the double thumbs up. And yes, I do it just like that. Sometimes in your classroom or in your school day, you don't want to do it verbally, maybe because you don't want to disrupt the flow of the classroom and interrupt their concentration. Other times it may be you have a student who is not interested in bringing attention to him or herself, at least in the verbal way. Having that signal available to you is a great way to motivate behaviors you want to see. Second set, activity versus tangible motivators. So an activity motivator is something that a student does or is engaged in once they demonstrate the behaviors that you want to see. Sometimes it looks like computer time, allowing them to visit another classroom. Uh, maybe, you act, maybe you allow them additional time to read a preferred book. Whatever works well for you in your classroom, the key here is the fact that the student gets to do something that they want to do, something that is preferred for them, is, is a great motivator to increase the behaviors you want to see. On the other hand, you have tangible reinforcers. And so this is something that they can put their hands on, something that they can touch. This can look like a treat, a small item like a pencil or eraser. This can look like even sometimes stickers or a sticker book or even a fidget toy. For me, I kind of shy away from tangible reinforcers on a frequent basis, mainly because I think you need to have the budget for that unless the school provides it for you. So tangibles are something that you can also use. So tangible or activity-based, you have to make the decision of what works for you in the season that you're in. The third set is extrinsic versus intrinsic motivators. So, And so this is the one that everybody wants to have. Why? Because it's like, I don't have to give the student anything. I don't have to say anything. And that can work for your classroom based on your students, based on their confidence, based on their maturity level. Extrinsic is something that they receive from the outside of themselves. So whether it's something verbal, whether it's something activity-based, whether it's a signal or a prompt, it's something that's outside of them that they take in. But when we talk about intrinsic, it's, a, it's about cultivating a confidence within themselves cultivating a value, a self-worth, uh, a sense of accomplishment within themselves, that is the actual motivator. Now, for me, my goal is always to build on their intrinsic 
on intrinsic motivation, meaning pointing out to students what they do well, pointing out to students their progress and allowing them to reflect in that and accept that and walk in that. But a lot of times our students, in, at least in the beginning of the year, they're not there. They're not at a place where intrinsic is the biggest thing for them. They're more into what can I get? What can I receive? But here's the thing. You can start there and gradually move them to a place of, I'm such a great student. I want to keep that up. I'm making such great progress. I want to keep that up. Wow, I'm learning great things. I want to keep that up. But there is a process for that. So you have extrinsic whether they're receiving something verbally, non-verbally, activity-based or tangible, or, or you can look at something intrinsic where you focus on helping them build their confidence and their sense of accomplishment as a motivator for positive and responsible student behavior. So there you have it, three sets. You have the verbal versus the non-verbal, you have the activity-based versus the tangible, and you have the extrinsic versus the intrinsic. And when I say versus, it's not that it's one one's better than the other. It's about you understanding that you have options and that you can use them at different times based on how you set up your classroom and the students that you have in your classroom. In the comments, tell me which type of motivator do you love to use the most or which type of motivator works well for your classroom? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.